Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everyone and welcome to another class as part of the course on film appreciation. For today's class we turn our attention to the action cinema, a very popular genre for many of us. Um, although Hollywood uh, genres are not watertight, the heroes or hero, uh, heroes or hero of uh, an action film are put through various physically demanding challenges and perform physical feats typically involving violence, fighting sequences and chases. This is, action cinema is always, has always been extremely popular. Okay. It is one of the safest genres all over the world and uh, it is uh, a rare movie. You know, you also have the genre of the so called B cinema, the B grade films. Okay. So, if you cannot make a high budget film, there is always a scope or opportunity to make a B class, B grade movie, the so called B film, which will uh, do extremely well in certain pockets. Okay. And it is true, uh, it is a, it's a universally accepted fact. The physical bodies uh, of the hero especially and also the other characters is put through a risk infused uh, environment and is subjected to forces that try to push it out of that environment. This is important to remember in action cinema, the resulting battle and the you know the triumph and the fantasies of empower, uh, empowerment are physicalized in characters of action cinema. Uh, one of the greatest films and earliest examples of this was the great train robbery released in 1903, which is considered to be the first action film. It is a very short film, but it is it has a distinction of being the first narrative film, a complete film. Okay, as you know, cinema was still in its early stages. You had the short features by the uh, Lumiere brothers and Georges Méliès, but uh, a full fledged narrative film, however short it may be, was The Great Train Robbery, which had a narrative. But as uh, time passed, action cinema the tended to take a more larger than life image, where the hero is a one man army. That is the time we are living in. Nowadays, uh, but uh, you know this this reached its peak in the seventies. Okay, think of the Dirty Harry movies starring Clint Eastwood, and think of our own cinema starring uh, Amitabh Bachchan, hero as a one man army, and this reached this phenomenon reached its pinnacle in the eighties with uh, the films of uh, uh, Stallone and Schwarzenegger and Van Damme. The type of action films moved from uh, the cowboy films, especially in Hollywood, to war adventures like The Guns of Navarone, to James Bond movies of the 60s, which present the resourceful hero. Some of the early action uh, heroes include John Wayne, Steve McQueen, the great Steve McQueen, and I suggest that you should watch um, some of his movies like uh, Bullet. Bullet is important, and uh, also uh, The Great Escape. And uh, uh, actors also, uh, also actors like uh, Bruce, Will Bruce uh, Lee, Ch uh, Chuck Norris, Clint Eastwood, they became very popular in the 70s. Bruce Lee, of, of course, was uh, the ultimate in Hong Kong martial arts cinema, and his brand of cinema also became very popular worldwide. With time, action movies became more nuanced and more subcultures emerged. In uh, the Lethal Weapon series, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover popularized the buddy cop cinema, where Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee were pioneers in the martial arts cinema. Given the importance of creating an, uh, and, uh, an audio visual spectacle, a combination of economic in incentives and artistic imperatives drive filmmakers to create uh, a certain you know wow factor in action films. It is therefore important to create a sensory experience that is beyond the everyday experience that is spectacle for spectacle's sake rather than be an antithesis to a narrative 
it is uh, suggested that action sequence could aid in taking the narrative forward. In action films, the work of the body is con constantly, the image of the body is constantly in focus and uh, uh, filmmakers use rapid editing as a device and also close up shots of the face and body wide ranging camera movements of the action films are intensified using these devices. So, the action audience are not passive spectators, but in the case of cinema, action cinema they are active uh, and I use it in quotations partic participants who are responding to the on screen stimuli. While visuals are an important component to action cinema, the auditory sense is also constantly used to enhance the action experience. Apart from explosions and gunshots, background music too plays an important role in the setting the mood, pacing the film etcetera. Uh, and the soundtracks are not used to offer the real bodies, but represent heroic idealized bodies. Now, action cinema is a body centric uh, is body centric in that the uh, body uh, within the universe of the film, the laws of physics are constantly set and broken by the protagonist to enhance the heroism of the performer and to emerge the viewer's body itself within the stunts and action sequences of the film. So, uh, this is the reason why people identify so much with that. You see, you, we have been talking about cinematic terms such as suture, where the viewers uh, are almost uh, they almost feel one with the happenings on the screen okay and therefore this is the reason why many uh, youngster try to imitate the action the dangerous action scenes which they watch on the cinematic screen until about the 90s action cinema were dominated by men and it was seen as a male bastion the protagonist was typically a white male who would emerge from the crisis by performing physical feats and stunts and uh, of course, the great heroes were Bruce Willis, Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Women in such cinema were reduced to few archetypes such as the damsel in distress, but that was also fa a fact in um, the western genre okay. and this is a constant allegation uh, uh, by Cinema, cinema experts um, towards uh, the action films led by Amitabh Bachchan uh, that the idea was the allegation was that uh, there were nothing for his heroines to do there, his heroines had nothing to do there. Okay. It was a one man show and he was a uh, one man army, most of his action films are all over and if you watch those movies some of the greatest films starring Amitabh Bachchan. Okay, you will feel that uh, women are just uh, relegated to the sidelines. Okay. Mother, however, was an important uh, character in most Bachchan movies. Um, so, uh, we also talk about action movies, um, for example, uh, characters of Rika in the lethal, lethal Weapon, the second part, who uh, exist to uh, affirm the heterosexuality of the protagonist. So, um, you either have a, a damsel in distress or the prostitute with a golden heart. So, this is uh, you know uh, the archetypal characters in action films. The bodily integrity of the hero and the male body as a location of security were maintained through such unidimensional characters. Um, However, things started changing and uh, um, Bridget Nelson uh, was one leading lady who posited an, in, uh, an interesting challenge to this masculine space as her uh, uh, androgynous image was complemented by her exaggerated female sexuality and she acted in action films such as uh, uh, Red Sonja, Cobra and Rocky, uh, the fourth Rocky. Although the female protagonist is uh, relatively new to uh, Hollywood, uh, the action female protagonist, uh, we should also understand the success in uh, uh, of uh, female characters in Hong Kong action movies. While there is an increase in the number of action hero in films of late, especially the female in the action film is simultaneously being 
marginalized. Earlier the hero advanced the narrative while the woman was just a spectator. The male hero in contemporary action picture provides both action as well as spectacle and the uh, woman is again reduced to uh, motivation for the hero's revenge. Now, um, there was there has been you know um, some challenges to the male bastion in action cinema. Uh, films such as Kill Bill, Charlie's Angels and Lara Croft which are situated in post feminist societies, they present to the viewer action, um, action girls okay, um, who are sanitized of their biological and psychological realities. While these films can be seen as progressive in their representation of the female body and its capacity for action, they are also generally uh, heterosexual, they are white and situated within a family. So, they are conventional, but is still unconventional. On the other, other hand, the end of the millennium saw a series of films, you know, there were a spate of films such as Fight Club and Dark City, also the Matrix, which portrayed a crisis of masculinity. Uh, so, uh, given the public's uh, engagement with the queer identities, the constructed nature of gender identities were laid bare in these films, especially uh, Fight Club. Uh, so, however, it does not mean that uh, the epic male body is over or the spectacle of it is over, it is, a, it is still continues in films such as the Gladiator, but just that a parallel discourse challenging traditional male bodies has already emerged. Now, uh, we have to also think of uh, the 80s, let us talk about the 80s and the beefed up bodies of Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone as well as Bruce Willis. And uh, uh, now, this has the, this has given way to uh, people like uh, let us say Keanu Reeves, Tom Cruise and Nicolas Cage who are not so beefed up. Okay, so, the, this, this new set of action heroes like uh, Frank in Transporter, comfortable with making affluent lifestyle choices and even comfortable with dancing so much, so that it is uh, even used in a fight sequence. And uh, in Van, uh, Van Diesel's uh, one of his films, uh, he is seen uh, wearing flamboyant costumes and the Fast and Furious franchise brought out high speed cars and a certain flavor of metrosexuality through its protagonists. Now, uh, think of films such as uh, Die Hard and uh, special, uh, especially Live Free or Die Hard, which explore the intra generational tension between John McLean and Farrell, in which the older hero gets to display his masculinity to a younger tech savvy hero. The idea could be that see whatever may happen. Uh, to the modern man and metrosexual man, the old world masculinity still uh, prevails, still dominates. Another uh, way traditional sense of masculinity still persists is through the use of catchphrases for the hero that continue in the die hard franchise, the Bond franchise and also off late in the Expendables franchise. The representation of race is another key theme in action cinema. The kind of racism that exists in action cinema ranges from hegemonic representation of whiteness in contemporary Hollywood films such as City of Joy, which portray the white man as a savior or through the casual racism present in Transformers. Non-white characters typically black and Hispanics are either used as fodder for humor through stereotypes or they are just treated as sidekicks of the hero, white hero. Now, noun whites in action films are typically portrayed as the fetishized other taking on roles such as helper, buddy or sole action hero. The advent of ac action heroes or actors such as uh, Will Smith and um, The Rock Johnson, Jet Li, Lucy Liu has opened up new types of spaces within action film genres in Hollywood, but, but despite their emergence, there exists a sort of racism in the way non-white characters are discussed and represented in and I would uh, um, uh, urge you to watch Lethal Weapon, the fourth part to understand race um, and masculinity in an action movie. Now, um, coming to more recent blockbuster uh, Avatar. So, in Avatar, uh, the trope of the non-white character 
uh, in this case um, Trudy Shaken played by Michelle Rodriguez, she sacrifices herself for the sake of the white man is, uh, and this trope continues in this film. And Jake played by Sam Worthington stands as a mediator between the savage world and the civilization and yet it is he who saves the savages out from the conquering race. Now, um, uh, homosexuality is another angle that is constantly being renegotiated in contemporary Hollywood action cinema, which typically has a heterosexual hegemony. So far, it was a completely white and a heterosexual male bastion, but things are changing now. Homosexuality is either used as a comic relief, as in the case of Michael Bay's uh, Bad Boys, the second part, or the demonizing of seemingly homosexual characters in uh, Zack Snyder's 300. In 300, Xerxes sticks to all the stereotypes of a homosexuality, um, <coughs> transvestism, transsexuality, while at the same time glorifying the homoerotic nature and potential of the army of 300, as laid by the character played by Gerard Butler. Similar depictions of homosexuality are also found in the Silence of the Lambs, Watchmen, A Man Apart, etc. Films like Spider Man. Uh, uh, second and the third part, they take a more subtle turn as they play on the campness of Peter Parker as being evil, especially in the third part, where there you have the dark, uh, the Spider-Man, Spider-Man with dark edges. This is exemplified when he comes into contact with the symbiote. Um, on the other hand, films such as Alexander are comfortable positing the protagonist in a sexual grey area. The mark shift in the nature of Hollywood action films occurred after the 9-11 attacks on America. Heroism is enhanced when a hero's violence is meted out in the name of justice and 9-11 was a new currency through which such heroism could be depicted. Although films such as Black Hawk Down and Fahrenheit 9-11 dealt with the sensitive, sensitive subject directly many other uh, uh, more uh, casual references to it are made in films such as Transformers, Iron Man and uh, War of the World. Okay. While it is important that uh, as uh, uh, you know as we are interested in cinema, so we love cinema, so as students or uh, um, cinephiles. Uh, to keep in mind the existence of stereotypes and politics within Hollywood action films and also in Hindi action films, uh, we have to understand that no film industry is devoid of politics. Indian films too are full of negative stereotyping, the hero being a fair North Indian heterosexual male or the villains being darker in color or crude references to homosexuality are persistent in art cinema as well, while new spaces are being uh, opened up for discussion, it is important to remain alert to the larger political project that action cinemas are part of. So, thank you very much and we will meet for our next class.